ही तो ले जाना है इट मीन्स यू आर नॉट अलोन I think it goes without saying that this video is going to have spoilers for both seasons of Rise and the movie, so be forewarned. Mikey's character is genuinely such an interesting and I'd even say overlooked part of Rise. I think most everyone who watches the show likes Mikey. I mean, it's kind of hard not to. He's just a very lovable character, as are all of them, but even the writers tend to look over him quite a bit. He doesn't get nearly as much development or focused screen time as his brothers do. It's not lacking enough that I would call him a static character. There are certainly changes throughout his character over time. I mean, take him fighting in the first episode versus in the movie. Obviously, he's grown, he just doesn't have as much intrapersonal development as the others. Unfortunately, part of this is due to the abrupt episode cut that season 2 experienced and multiple Mikey-centric episodes had to be scrapped from the season in order to build up the plot. His lack of development is a tragic catalyst of corporate intervention and was out of the writing team's control. Now, before I continue with this discussion, I do want to make a quick little disclaimer. I am putting a lot more emphasis on the negative aspects of Splinter's parenting solely for the fact that I am making a point with it. Because of this, I am going to most likely come across as harsher to Splinter's character than I attend to. So here's a little disclaimer. Splinter is not, and I do not think he is a terrible father. He is just flawed like every other parent. He has his shortcomings, he has his faults, he makes mistakes. Every parent does. I won't be going into much depth regarding him as a character as this is about Mikey, but for the sake of transparency, there are multiple things that contribute to his parenting style that I'm not bringing up at all or simply vaguely mentioning. As well as there is cultural context to his parenting style of them being an Asian American family of Japanese ancestry, on top of the turtles being black coated. I don't feel as though I can talk about these in depth as I am not a part of those cultures, however, this is doesn't discredit anything I bring up, there's just some more context that could be provided to further explain what I am discussing here, and I encourage you to listen to those who can provide that extra information. This TMNT iteration puts most of its attention on depicting a modern family. Naturally, I feel like Mikey's character really represents this almost overlooked dynamic many youngest siblings hold that is present in a lot of families. Being the youngest, Mikey is coddled more and treated with more sensitivity than his brothers. This is shown through the other's dynamic with him throughout the series. For example, you may notice Leo, Donnie, and Raph don't really rip into Mikey in the same way they do with each other while teasing. The older brothers are always looking out for Mikey in their own ways. Mikey never had the pressure to contribute to his family in the same way his brothers did. This is a point that is going to be brought up multiple times throughout this video because of how important it is in regards to his relationship with his brothers and how he acts. In Donnie's gifts, Donnie makes an inflatable suit for Mikey so that he won't hurt himself by jumping around. This is a gift that noticeably annoys Mikey as it gets in the way of his fighting style which is very hyperactive and flashy. More specifically, however, he is upset by the prospect of Donnie feeling the need to baby him. I don't know! It's this suit! Every time I do some razzmatazz, this thing inflates and throws me off my game! I need my razz and my taz! And every time I drop a killer joke, does Donnie really think I'm a crazy kangaroo who needs to wear a padded suit so I don't hurt myself? He doesn't like being held back because his brothers are too concerned with his safety. It may be why he goes for such a, as he puts it, razzmatazz approach to fighting. He wants to prove that he can do things without the intervention and supervision of his brothers. Raph is significantly more overprotective protective of Mikey than he is over his other brothers. This is a dynamic that seems to have a lot more depth than we are shown in the series and the only time it gets much focus is in the episode Hot Soup the Game. In this episode, Mikey decides that he is going to go on his first solo mission in order to retrieve a Lujitsu game from an auction house. Raph is the only one of his brothers that seems concerned at the idea of this. His concern greatly annoys Mikey throughout the entire episode, leading to Mikey making a few passive aggressive remarks towards his older brother. Leo, I love you. That's for you, Raph. You get last game. Hey. Mikey out. <laughs> <sighs> okay, Magic Mike. Time to snag that game, go home, and rub it in Raph's face. And Raph thought I couldn't do this all by myself. Ah! Solo mission complete. You sure you don't want first game, Raph? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I earned it? Why, thank you. During Mikey's mission, he continues to bring up needing to succeed in order to prove Raph that he is capable of doing things on his own. This desire to stick it to Raph isn't new either. 
There are quite a few small moments in the series that depict the slight tension in their relationship as far back as the first episode, where Mikey steps forward after Raph's failed attempt at opening the hidden mystic doorway and takes pride in managing to succeed where Raph didn't. Important side note, there aren't malicious undertones in this behavior, it's simply a petty gotcha for Mikey to say, see, I can hold my own just fine, I don't need you all the time. It isn't just a coincidence that the B plot of this episode is Cassandra attempting to prove herself to the Foot Clan. Both of their storylines directly parallel the other and are about trying to prove themselves to the people who take care of them, especially to the authority figure that is more overbearing. In Cassandra's story arc throughout the series, it begins to focus on how she feels overlooked and undermined by always being held back by those above her. Due to how strongly they are paralleled in this episode, it doesn't seem like too far of a reach for me to say Mikey feels something similar towards his place in the family. It's an aspect of his character that I really wish had more time developed to it. This need to prove himself is so strong that even when he is struggling to fight Cassandra, he is insistent on doing it on his own. Granted, I do genuinely think Mikey had a handle on the situation. And when Raph calls Mikey uh, little man what say what I mean big man and Mikey gets angry Raph looks so scared this is the face of a man that does not want to upset his younger brother like I think this might be the most scared Raph has ever looked while having a disagreement with his brothers but putting how comical it is to the side it does demonstrate Mikey does not like being talked down to whatsoever for his age or size based on Raph's reaction it is probably something they are all aware of and know to tiptoe around as it will get a negative reaction of Mikey. Another aspect of his struggle for independence isn't just escaping his brother's coddling, but also removing himself from taking advantage of others for selfish convenience. We get our first glimpse into Mikey abusing what I am deeming youngest sibling privileges in Shell in a Cell, where he continuously takes things from Donnie without really thinking about how it may make Donnie feel, causing the two to get into an argument. Mikey realizes and apologizes, but it is something that becomes the focus of another episode involving Mikey's struggle for independence. Nothing but truffle is a Mikey-centric episode just like Hot Soup the Game. The way Mikey treats Todd throughout this episode is very reflective of how he treats his brothers. He doesn't even think twice about the way he's ordering Todd around because he's so used to his brothers doing stuff for him whenever he wants. Like I said, he's the youngest, so he gets called more. This is visually represented by him sitting on top of Todd, similar to how he does with Rap. He's so used to someone else effortlessly carrying his weight, both metaphorically and literally, that he doesn't even realize it may be heavy or put substantial pressure on them. Just like he would take advantage of his brother's partiality to his needs, he uses Todd's kindness to get something he wants. Although not intentionally callous, this does upset Todd and his feelings go neglected. When the two are found out, Mikey immediately puts the blame on Todd in the same way that you would put blame on your sibling for something to avoid getting in trouble, a move that the youngest is notorious for using to get out of a lecture unscathed. I'm the youngest in my family and I can tell you that I absolutely did this to my sister when I accidentally broke something or caused an issue. Mikey doesn't notice that there's an issue with his actions towards Todd until he is mistreated by meat sweats. Mikey then apologizes to Todd. He realizes he needs to take responsibility for his actions and own up to his behavior, not hide behind someone else when he makes a mistake, an integral part of learning to be independent. Interestingly, when trying to confront meat sweats, he asks himself what Raph would do. So clearly, despite wanting independence and wanting to prove to to Raph that he can do things on his own, he still looks up to his older brother for guidance. He just generally avoids asking for it directly. Also a little side tidbit, Mikey's naive trust can also serve as an obstacle to his independence as well. Where Leo is most likely feeling insecure and you got served and trying to win over Mikey in order to feel better about himself, Mikey was trying to best Leo in an attempt to prove he can be sufficient on his own and independent. And I could probably go on and on about the little examples of this sprinkled throughout the show, but I think that would be redundant. Through all of this, it is easy to tell that Mikey hates being babied and treated as if he is incapable solely because he's the youngest in the family. He wants to feel as useful as his brothers and be able to protect them and be there for them in the same way that they are for him. As many youngest siblings do, this makes him desperate to be seen as an individual. 
He becomes more ostentatious with his self-proclaimed razzmatazz to draw more attention to himself in fights in a subtle act of rebellion against his brother's overprotective attitude towards him, especially towards Raph. Mikey actually appears to distance himself from Raph the most due to him feeling as though he needs to prove himself as independent to negate his overprotectiveness, whereas you will see him regularly cleaning to Leo or Donnie for emotional support. This is a dynamic that I really wish got more attention in the show. I also believe there is supposed to be an episode that focused on how Mikey and Ralph used to be closer when they were younger, therefore making the most likely contributor to their growing distance being Mikey's want for independence. Now, due to the significant lack of attention and development this specific aspect of Mikey's character gets, it's difficult to talk more in depth about it. However, his desire to be seen as more than the baby in the family does certainly motivate him on many different grounds and is just one piece of the puzzle that is figuring out Mikey's character as a whole. One of Mikey's most defining traits is his empathy and overwhelming optimism. He tries his best to see the good in people, and he feels bad for those even in the most extreme circumstances where most people simply wouldn't, making it one of his greatest strengths, but also one of his greatest weaknesses. In one of Ron Corsillo's tweets, one of the same ones that confirmed Donnie as being autistic, Mikey was also confirmed to have ADHD. I bring this up because similarly to how an autistic person could have low empathy or high empathy, people with ADHD are also statistically likely to have high empathy. I have reasons to believe Mikey has high empathy, which ends up being a huge driving force and motivator for his character. High empathy is exactly what it sounds like. It's an extremely intense form of empathy. Empathy is putting yourself in someone else's shoes and feeling what they are feeling. It is not sympathy, which is just simply feeling bad for another person going through something. It is not compassion, which is caring for someone else. Empathy is feeling sad because another person is sad. It's when your friend is crying, which causes you to cry with them because you're imagining exactly how it feels to be in their position. It's an effect of being in tune with others' emotions. High empathy is when this is amplified. It can actually be harmful in many cases as it may make it hard to navigate relationships when you feel so strongly all the time. It can also make it difficult for someone to grasp their own emotional needs when they're constantly feeling the needs of others as well. His high empathy makes him very sensitive to arguments and tension within interpersonal relationships. He constantly intervenes as a mediator in order to relieve any tension that is caused by dispute of any kind. Partially out of genuine kindness, as he wants everyone to be happy, and also out of alleviating any discomfort a tense environment would indirectly cause him to be in. It is actually to the point where I would argue Mikey probably has disordered anxiety from it based on how he acts. Not really where this essay is going, so I'll just leave it at that as food for thought. Again, this is demonstrated in Mikey's character throughout the series, in big moments and small moments. Take literally any scene where the focus is on a specific character's feelings and look at Mikey's facial expressions. Typically, it is either mirroring the other character or significantly more noticeably emotional than the others around him. I imagine this is why he is put next to Donnie a lot, as he is the least expressionate of his brothers and that stark difference really highlights it. In Hot Soup the Game, he immediately gives Cassandra the benefit of the doubt despite the suspicious circumstances of the situation. Even when Cassandra begins to attack him, he still tries to assume good intentions because he's empathizing with her. People with high empathy, for better or for worse, have a tendency to try and seek out the good in people. Nothing but truffle dives into the worst outcome of giving people the benefit of the doubt, and that is where you allow people to take advantage of you. This is also another aspect of a struggle for independence, as seeing the good in everyone regardless of circumstance can potentially result in missing important red flags in a person. They're not exactly subtle about this one in the episode either. I mean, Mikey lets Meat Sweats literally walk over him in one scene. Throughout this episode, Meat Sweats is manipulating Mikey, pretending to value him in order to use Mikey for his personal gain. Mikey soaks this up because he likes seeing the good in people and it's coming from his idol of all people, but unfortunately not everyone has good intentions. The viewer can see this is putting a strain on Mikey, even though he himself is oblivious. The silver hammer Meat Sweats gives him is symbolic of how the short-lived friendship was entirely one-sided, as it was a symbol of their friendship that was literally weighing Mikey down. Once Meat Sweats revealed he was only using Mikey, the reality that he was being manipulated crushes him. There wasn't a single part of Mikey that doubted Meat Sweats 
Earth's generosity, and he didn't speak up when he was being mistreated because, again, he just assumed good intentions. A nice touch to this episode is that it doesn't punish Mikey for being so trusting either, he just learns to treat others better, stand up for himself, and it is Meat Sweats who is in the wrong for taking advantage of Mikey's positivity. In Late Fee, Mikey has to be shut up to stop him from being honest to Ghost Bear, who is actively trying to hurt them. He regularly does this where he just innately trusts people enough to be honest with them without really thinking about the negative consequences that could transpire. In Breaking Purple, he notices Donnie is having trouble expressing his feelings in a constructive way towards Sheldon. He more or less counsels Donnie to be more communicative with his feelings rather than authoritative towards the drone and chastises Donnie when he's being too harsh. And interesting thought I would like to point out, Mikey is probably astutely aware of how damaging this would be for Sheldon because Mikey himself is used to a similar treatment from Wrath. He knows what it feels like to be denied something or to not be properly communicated with when it comes to his own feelings. As demonstrated in Hot Soup the Game, Raph only caves into Mikey's request after Leo chimes in with Mikey's favor and Donnie doesn't refute to it either. In Repairing the Baron, Mikey finds Draxum on the streets and decides to help him despite everything that he had done to them in the past. He gives Draxum the benefit of the doubt and allows him a second chance due to the fact that he's technically the reason he has his family and believes deep down there is still good in him that's worth finding. This is an idea that everyone in the family finds repugnant, but they begrudgingly follow through with it literally only because it is Mikey that wants this and they don't want to make him upset. As I've said, the guy's got youngest sibling privileges and he knows how to use them to his advantage. But he is stubborn as hell. For better or for worse, he's going to see the redeemable qualities in even those who have made many mistakes such as Draxum. Even once he starts to lose faith in Draxum being able to change for the better, he's still insistent that they help him fight off the bounty hunters. This act of kindness is ultimately what gets Draxum to save humans and begin to change his ways, even if it's done with much irritation from the sheep man. It seems he's also fallen victim to begrudgingly going along with whatever Mikey says. In Flushed but not forgotten, Mikey is the most guilt-ridden over what happened to Piebald. It gets to the point where this causes him debilitating psychological distress. Splinter specifically chooses to start with Mikey first because he knows Mikey would be the most likely to crack and confess first due to this. In the episode Hidden City Part 3, Mikey's sensitivity to conflict is made extremely apparent. The entire episode is spent with him trying to get Draxum and Splinter to get along as the two act like two divorced dads who had a messy breakup taking their kid of shared custody out for the day. Splinter and Draxum both agree to come along with Mikey, entirely for Mikey's sake and not all because they want to be around each other. Mikey acts as a mediator for Draxum and Splinter this entire episode. It's obvious he's trying to enjoy himself and hoping his two dads will follow him in suit, but he gets more and more noticeably upset as the episode continues and nothing between the adults changes. He is very quick to hide his feelings around the two until it is actively brought up by Splinter finally verbally communicating his grievances with the alchemist. Maybe he didn't make us for the right reasons, but I'm still glad he did. So where is he? During the scene with Splinter and Draxum arguing in the dumpster, Mikey is sat between them and is upset to the point of tears. He just really, really cannot handle the argument going on around him because of the amount of emotional distress it puts him under due to his heightened sensitivity and empathy to those around him. Also, being around your parents while they are arguing and not being able to leave is generally just not a great situation to be in. I've, I've been there. It's not fun. <laughs> Another aspect of his heightened emotions demonstrates itself through his difficulty handling high-stress situations during physical fights throughout the series. It's similar to stress induced by interpersonal conflict, just different circumstances. Despite how skilled of a fighter he is, out of all his brothers, he is definitely the least mentally prepared for these high-stress circumstances that arise amidst the battle. When it comes to a fight-or-flight response, or more fittingly, a fight-flight-freeze or fawn response, Mikey regularly freezes up. There are many small moments of this happening throughout the show, all of which happen so fast or in the background that it's easy to miss. There are many moments where Mikey instinctively goes into his show and he regularly will latch onto one of his brothers or even allow himself to be carried by them at times. In the Gumbus, there is a moment where Leo has to physically pull him away because he freezes up. It's a small moment, but during Repair in the Baron, when Draxon is hanging on the edge of the Ferris wheel with some humans, Mikey looks scared, eyes glued onto the site, before Raph calls his name, snapping him out of it. 
During their fight with the Shredder in the season 2 finale, Mikey is the most noticeably shaken up by everything going around him. He squeezes his eyes shut as he launches his Kasari Fundo at the Shredder to restrain him. During a fight of any kind, it is important to keep your eyes on the opponent at all times. Even though this shot of Mikey is barely a second long, him not being able to keep his eyes on the Shredder shows just how scared he is and is also a reminder that despite everything they've been through, he's still a kid. When Shredder breaks free from the chains restraining him, sending Raph and Donnie crashing into the walls and breaking Mikey's weapon in the process, he looks up to him paralyzed by fear. We don't see how Mikey reacts after this as it cuts away to April and Draxum, but once Leo gets back, Mikey is being thrown around the room before Raph comes smashing into the Shredder in a fit of rage. I think it's a fair assumption to make that since Mikey was weaponless and practically defenseless against a force as strong as Shredder, he was most likely being thrown around the room relentlessly, as was Donnie. In contrast, his brothers have much more level-headed reactions. Even when they are noticeably scared themselves, they deal with it in some other way in order to handle the situation of the calm demeanor. Donnie starts breaking it down logically, assessing the situation as a problem to be fixed. Leo actually does a very similar thing to Donnie, except his logic focuses more on strategizing. That or he starts making jokes. Raph pushes down his fear and instinctively uses his brute strength and size to protect his brothers. During extreme stress, he masks his fear with anger. Mikey wears his emotions on his sleeve for anyone and all to see. He doesn't hide his emotions and expresses them as they are. He is the only one in his family that does this. <coughs> He is the only one in his family that does this. When Donnie and him are about to be crushed in the turtle tank, Donnie is able to keep himself relatively calm in order to relay information to April, but Mikey isn't able to restrain himself from freaking out. When Donnie is to merge with the Technodrome, Mikey is equally as grossed out as Donnie is. I mean, in general, this is genuinely disgusting, like hell if I'd want to be even in the same country as this shit, but Donnie's discomfort is certainly amplifying Mikey's because he seems to be feeling for Donnie as well as feeling his own disgust here. There is also the whole ordeal with their mystic powers and nympho. The way I see it, mystic powers seem to be harnessed through emotion or, at the very least, fueled by it. This would also explain why Donnie has such difficulty with unlocking his mystic powers and such a complicated relationship with their existence because he is the most emotionally detached of his brothers. It is actually similar with Leo as he probably struggles the second most next to Donnie because he is never entirely honest with himself or others when it comes to his feelings. Raph is motivated by his determination to protect protect his brothers, which is a very intense feeling for him to tap into. Ninpo seems to be similar to this, but it's powered by trust, we are basically told that upright. For the most part, it is Raph holding them back from harnessing their Ninpo because of the rift in their relationships, but that says a lot more about Raph as a character than it does about Mikey. In the movie, we find out Mikey becomes the strongest mystic warrior the world had ever seen, which considering he opens a literal time gateway, that's not a far-fetched praise to be given. Mikey is clearly more in tune with his mystic powers than his brothers, and his unrivaled strength with them is foreshadowed from the very first episode when he is able to open the hidden city entrance and unlocks his mystic weapons abilities first. Assuming that mystic powers are in fact fueled and made stronger by being in touch with your emotions, this just even further shows not only the gravity at which Mikey experiences his emotions, but also that he is very in tune with them and is motivated purely by emotion, not logic. Less dramatically, his sensitivity to other allows him to merely serve as a good hype man throughout most of the episodes. He's a voice of positivity to his brothers where they may otherwise be feeling down and actively encourages those around him to keep their spirits up. He has a very good handle of his emotions in the emotions of those around him and handles them maturely, especially for his age. Almost too maturely. Before I continue with the video, I have an announcement. I started a Patreon! So if you'd like to support my content directly, then you can go over there and become a patron. And you'll get your name shouted out at the end of my videos. Or you could just subscribe for free. Either way, the support is very appreciated. I hope you enjoy the rest of this video. Thank you! Mikey is the most outwardly emotional one in his family, not just because of how intensely he experiences his emotions, but because he's allowed to be. Donnie, Leo, and especially Raph all had pressure put on them due to being older. They had to learn to hide their emotions in order to protect the family, specifically to protect Mikey as he is the youngest. I mentioned earlier that Mikey is the most coddled out of his family. What I mean by this is all of his brothers take priority in his safety over their own and the others. 
Raph being the eldest and being responsible for the safety of each of them leads to him being more overprotective compared to Leo and Donnie, as he also has to worry about their safety. That pressure placed on the three of them led them to not expressing their feelings nearly as much. Donnie and Leo both hide their insecurities and overcompensate for themselves. Raph rarely opens up to his brothers, keeping everything steady by using himself as a foundational pillar of support. Mikey didn't have the pressure placed on him to protect anyone growing up, or at least that's what it looks like to basically everyone else. He grew up being the one that was guaranteed safety, while the others may feel shame, embarrassment, or most importantly, guilt for expressing their feelings. Mikey doesn't have this problem, as he's used to his emotional needs being taken sensitively by his family. That's not to say that the others wouldn't also be treated with respect if they earnestly opened up, but to those who grew up with siblings, you know exactly what this looks like. If your younger sibling is scared, to the oldest, it generally does not matter what they are feeling. They will make sure to look out for them first. It's essentially an obligation for them. This can manifest itself in some really unhealthy coping mechanisms if it isn't given the proper emotional attention from parents. And that's where the problem lies here. Splinter's parenting does not provide an environment for Raph, Donnie, or Leo to let down their walls, causing each of them to struggle with being vulnerable in their own right. Splinter is emotionally neglectful. For those who do not know what it is, emotional neglect is when a parent or guardian does not give the proper attention to the emotional needs of their children. It is a very common form of neglect, and in many cases, both the parent and the children aren't aware of it. It tends to be caused through a cycle of generational trauma, as do most shortcomings in parenting styles. When emotional neglect happens subconsciously, it is usually because the parent grew up in an unstable household themselves, has health issues that make it difficult for them to be an active part of their children's lives, or unresolved trauma, all of which Splinter has. It is important to understand that, unlike physical neglect, emotional neglect is not always abusive. Many cases of it merely result in strained familiar relationships that can contribute to a dysfunctional family dynamic. Some of the effects of emotional neglect on a child can consist of having a hard time understanding your own emotions, feeling uncomfortable in emotional situations, being a perfectionist, being hard on yourself, avoiding depending on others, and etc. You may notice that many of those traits are applicable to Raph, Donnie, and Leo. There are many different ways emotional neglect can present itself within a family dynamic, but the way it exhibits itself through the mottos isn't very hard to spot. Raph was most likely more than partially responsible for raising his brothers, making up for where Splinter lacked. Due to him also being a child, there is only so much he's able to do, and when it comes to emotions, it will certainly be lacking. The pressure that taking care of his brothers puts on him is something he takes very seriously and overworks himself in order to hold up. Leo and Donnie are both very insecure in their own ways, but they were saved by some of the weight put on the pressure thanks to Raph holding them up to the best of his ability. All three of them, as I have mentioned, are very emotionally distant, either with themselves, others, or both. Mikey, being the youngest, had all three of his brothers to rely on. He had four figures older than him helping raise him to some capacity, which is more than all of his brothers combined. Hence his ability to be vulnerable without much pressure being placed on him to hide it. So it seems at face value that Mikey doesn't really have pressure placed on him because of the emotional neglect, but that's only at face value. I was debating mentioning this, but one of the most important aspects of fictional characters is that they represent real experiences. I mean, what's a character if not something to see ourselves in? I mentioned before that I'm the youngest in my family. I actually have a fairly similar situation to the turtles. I don't have extended family, it's just me, my sisters, and my parents who are emotionally neglectful. In my experience, being the youngest gives you an interesting perspective on the things going on around you. See, the youngest typically are shielded from more negativity going on in the house, whether it be from outside sources or internal stressors going on. Typically, parents and or older siblings want to make sure you're safe and will take care of you if needed thanks to those youngest sibling privileges I have mentioned. For some, this leaves them with the belief that the youngest are left entirely naive to anything that's going on under the surface. Those people are usually wrong. I noticed my older sister's distance. I could tell my parents fell often. I could see my other sister's feelings of being ignored and the stress of taking care of my emotional outbursts got to her, even if I wasn't aware of the specific origins of that stress at the time. I constantly felt this pressure to keep my family together because they never really were, not fully, even when they would act like it. I wasn't stupid, although naive. I was distraught when my other sister started to make new friends and spend less time with me because all I wanted was for all of us to be present. And maybe when I was younger than 10 years old, I didn't really understand much of it. But back then, I could still tell things were off. 
I would try my best to get us together. I begged my mom to have a weekly game night. I would annoy my sisters till they paid attention to me because if I needed something, at least a few of them would work together to get it sorted out. If not for me, then to avoid a future headache. My entire world revolved around my sisters and my parents, and to me, the most important thing was keeping them together. And even though I had the emotional support of my sister, I still did not get the emotional attention I needed from my parents. I can assure you that my sister's attempt did not hide that from me. My point with this is children aren't stupid. Mikey isn't stupid. Although a bit naive about the things going on around them, they're able to, at the very least, understand the concept of what is going on. Mikey would obviously pick up on the fact that his family isn't the most healthy in the emotional department. I really want to emphasize the fact that due to Mikey's hypersensitivity and the fact that family is so important to him, he has a very strong need for family, specifically with them being in harmony and together. He relies on it. He actively pursues having a larger family whenever given the chance. He is insistent on cultivating an environment of peace amongst everyone. Family and community is incredibly important to him, and while it's important to everyone else in the series, it is a virtue he vocalizes the most next to Raph. Mikey's dynamic in the family actually parallels Raph's in a lot of ways. Mikey isn't compensating for himself like Leo and Donnie, rather he's putting himself aside for the benefit of everyone else. While Raph does this with his brute strength and size, making sure to be the physical barrier of protection for his brothers, Mikey does this with emotions, acting as the glue that keeps everyone from spiraling into negativity or at least attempting to alleviate any repercussions that bottling up your feelings could bring. Due to Mikey being as hypersensitive as he is, he is able to pick up on all the tension within his family remarkably well. Mikey grew up most definitely noticing Leo and Donnie putting pressure on themselves. All of them are at least vaguely aware of the pressures Raph puts on himself to take care of them. Raph certainly isn't going to open up about it to his younger siblings. He doesn't really vent about it at all until the last episode of season 2. Donnie will occasionally make comments about wanting more validation from the people around him, but will only openly acknowledge his insecurities once to April in Witches vs. Donnie. Leo never opens up about his insecurities, not even by the end of the movie, and certainly not to Mikey specifically. That's not even to mention the fact that he is aware of his father's distance because he's also a receptor of that treatment. All of that emotional baggage being bottled up is not healthy and, if left unchecked, could lead to a dysfunctional family. Which it does. Basically, what I'm saying is Mikey grew up being aware of two things. One, he can tell his family is much more reserved than him and he knows this causes a strain in their relationships. Two, he is able to express his emotions freely and his siblings will follow through with his needs with more tolerance because he's the youngest. And he can use this to his advantage. So he uses it to his advantage. Now, you might be asking yourself, how the hell does Mikey wanting to be independent from his brothers play into literally anything I have said in this video? Because so far that section seems so out of place, right? Mikey is hypersensitive with high empathy. He sees the good in people for better or for worse and wishes to try to help them sort out their emotional problems. He is extremely sensitive to conflict of most kinds, but he hates being babied by his brothers because of it. And there it is! Cue his desire for independence striking and interwoven with his emotional intelligence creates the perfect recipe for completing a certain role in the family. He wants to be seen as competent by his brothers despite how emotional he is, so he won't be coddled at every every taste of danger they get. He wants to bridge the rift in his family caused by Splinter's emotional distance to avoid serious conflict. So what does he do? He becomes their personal family therapist. Dr. Delicate Touch, which was the biggest mystery to me character-wise before analyzing him in detail, is the one who isn't afraid to speak his mind no matter how harsh. Just straightforward, direct communication. No beating around the bush or attempting to shield others to make room for misunderstandings for the sake of letting someone down easy. He is able to get away with such straightforward communication more often because because he is the youngest and his siblings are much more lenient with him, as shown with the Draxum situation. Therefore, being this blunt is less likely to cause an argument as opposed to if it were between any others in the family. Hence, Dr. Delicate Touch feels nothing. Dr. Feelings is the one who gets his brothers to be introspective about their emotions to openly communicate with each other in a constructive way, because the only reason they will otherwise is apparently if they're in a life or death situation. Oh my god. His entire character is about communicating, reaching out, hopeful that there is good in everyone, that deep down, everyone wants peace too, that even in the worst moments, there is a silver lining to be had. 
that no single person or situation is incapable of mending, that even their family, as minutely dysfunctional as it is with their father's emotional neglect and the complex issues it has caused amongst each brother individually and with each other, can be improved. He wants all of them to feel as protected as he did growing up. He wants all of them to be able to express their emotions honestly, just as he does. He wants them all to be the best versions of themselves. He sees his brothers have so much weight put on their shoulders, so he feels the need to alleviate it by playing the role as a therapist and attempt to keep everyone glued together. It's an easy role he can fill as he has noticed that his needs and safety are often prioritized by his brothers. He uses the leniency he has with being the youngest and manipulates it to his best ability to benefit the rest of his family as well. It's the least he can do in his eyes. After all, he has it the easiest, right? Right? Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles feels like a love letter to those of dysfunctional families. The story takes the experience of each member and gives them a gentle nudge as if to say, you're not alone, you are seen. It is only three words, but the impact of feeling understood is greater than I can articulate. It is one of the biggest facets of the series that really resonated with me. I could sit here and write an entire university-level analysis on the themes of Rise. I could pull out all the fancy literary terms, but ultimately the most important part of stories is how they make us feel, and personally, I'd rather focus on that. Because by god did the series speak to me on an emotional level that I think deserves to be discussed. Due to Mikey's character not getting a fully fleshed out arc, the ending of this video is going to be a little clunky, but I said I was working with scraps and I can promise you I did my best to run as far as I could with them. With how much focus was put into the family dynamic between the characters from their petty arguments to their unwavering love for each other to each of their individual struggles, the series wastes no time making you understand that this family may be fictional, but it is very much real. I really wish they had more time to focus on Mikey's piece of the whole to the same amount of depth that Leo got in the movie. They do attempt to give his arc some closure in the movie with the little time they had, so for what it's worth, this is what we got. So hello to all of my viewers for older siblings. Guess what? Being the youngest in the family is hard too. His status as the youngest gives him this strange power. This is the part of being the youngest that the older siblings will tend to envy because they see them as spoiled. And I won't discredit it, I'm sure some families the youngest is spoiled, and maybe that's part of it in this specific case, but it's not like Mikey wasn't emotionally neglected too. Let me reiterate that one, let it settle in your head. It's not like Mikey wasn't emotionally neglected too. Because if he wasn't, he never would have had to be the family therapist in the first place. I mentioned before that when I was younger, I was in a similar place as Mikey was within my family. My parents were also emotionally neglectful, sort of similar to how Splinter is, and while it's not exactly the same, it is something I can relate to. I felt responsible for trying to keep everyone together because for the sake of my own development and source of stability, I needed them to stay together. For a multitude of different reasons, this pressure ended up getting to me. Every time I was met with a maybe next week from my mom, every time my promise was broken, the more tired of it I'd get. Due to many personal factors that I don't feel the need to disclose in entirety, I ended up getting extremely depressed when I was around 12 years old and stopped trying to hold my family close entirely. The distance in my family was a huge contributor to my poor mental health, as it would be for anyone. And that same pressure is the pressure Mikey puts on himself. When there's an argument, he mediates. When there's a disagreement, his opinion can hold priority. He can single-handedly bring his family together and get them to talk out their problems maturely and respectfully. It's why I relate to Mikey so much. As a character, he may not have gotten as much focus as some of the other characters in the series, and there's a chance he may never get that extra dose of spotlight, but while watching the show and paying attention to his character, I can pinpoint this and I see what it is. I know what I'm seeing because that was me at one point in my life. Mikey's character, his goal of keeping everyone together, of being desperate to be independent but terrified of losing connection to his family. It's almost like looking into a mirror of a younger version of myself. Next to the importance of family, one of the most prominent messages of not only the series but the movie is the importance of hope, an idea that Mikey personifies. For this, if it wasn't already obvious, I'd argue that Mikey's emotional awareness is the glue that keeps his family together. His role on the team is boosting their morale, mediating their conflict, and providing excitement with his razzmatazz that shakes things up when things get hard. Until it isn't.
It is easy to tell that between the events of the season 2 finale and the movie, the brothers' relationships, especially Leo and Raph's, are much more strained than they were previously. Leo, being named the new leader, creates a hierarchy shift that experiences a lot of growing pains that aren't really resolved until the end of the movie. This is stressful for everyone in its own right, but it's understandably very stressful for Mikey. As the movie is much more focused on Leon Roth's conflict, it isn't extremely obvious, but small details shown throughout the movie do point to Donnie and Mikey being much closer than in the series. It isn't that their dynamic happened to be left relatively unscathed by the power shift in the team, rather Donnie most likely became a source of stability for Mikey during Leon Roth's frequent arguments, as they would be a huge stressor for Mikey. After literally getting in between Raph and Leo's argument to try and stop them, Splinter ends up breaking up himself. The others look guilty and disappointed in themselves, but to me, Mikey looks a little angry here. Whether this anger is directed at his brothers for not being able to talk about their feelings peacefully, or at his father for not trying to help him sort out the power shift he caused isn't very clear. After retrieving the key, Leo walks away from all of them, adamant on saving Raph without really thinking it through. Mikey looks the most visibly upset throughout the scene. It is Donnie who puts a comforting hand on his back as they follow Leo to the tank. When Leo continues to run off without them, Donnie is the one that makes sure to stay with Mikey to keep him safe. When Raph is corrupted by the Krang and begins attacking them, you can see Mikey in a shell, with Donnie being the one to carry him. But it's not just Donnie comforting Mikey, I think their clinginess to each other is out of solidarity more than anything. Donnie looks, at best, peeved with Leo's attitude and, at worst, just as upset as Mikey. So, despite being Mikey's emotional support, it would still be obvious to Mikey that the tension caused by the leadership change is affecting Donnie negatively as well. There is a lot unsaid about this, as it isn't the focus of the movie, but given what we know about Mikey's character and the fact that even Donnie has begun entering himself into highly emotional situations to try and mediate alongside him, I think it's safe to assume Mikey felt a lot of pressure to resolve the tension from Leo being appointed leader to the point where he was beginning to struggle with keeping himself together. Him slowly breaking under the pressure is apparent as throughout the movie, it's hard not to notice that Mikey is losing hope at the absurd horror of the situation they are facing. At the beginning of the movie, he's encouraging Leo, telling him, As long as you believe in yourself, you can do anything! By the time they make the final plan to save Raph and trap the Krang, he doesn't sound so sure anymore. He's latching onto optimism out of desperation and is relying on the others to boost it rather than him being the one keeping high hopes. Despite how stressed he is, he is trying to keep up his optimism throughout the movie. During many of the scenes, Mikey is seen in the background curling into himself. He can be seen frowning, sometimes with a quivering lip, wringing his hands, and his legs are drawn bent almost as if the weight of his emotions are making him struggle to keep himself standing. He is, as per usual, the most obvious about his stress. While fighting, he isn't flaunting his usual showy style, rather he's folding into himself not nearly as confident. And he continues to try using his mystic hands before deflating under the stress and solemnly proclaiming, <sighs> Casey must have been wrong about me. In this scene right here, he's trying his best to be optimistic, but it's a desperate attempt to latch onto whatever he can, not out of genuine hopefulness. It is the polar opposite of how it usually is. He's relying on the others to keep his spirits up. Slowly, he's getting lost in the stress of everything, no longer even to keep up a facade at this point. Remember how I mentioned that mystic powers are most likely a result of some kind of emotional connection? I believe one of the reasons he was unable to use his mystic hands until he saves Leo in the movie is because he wasn't actually following his emotions instinctively. He was more so trying to get them to do something out of blind fear. I think his emotions were overwhelming him in the way that makes it hard for you to really think clearly, to an extent. For lack of better words, the weight of his feelings, the weight of trying to keep everyone together, was making him doubt his own. Leo is the one that pulls him back from his worries by telling him that they won't give up on Raph no matter what. He gives Mikey a reminder that not all hope is lost. And when they're in the clutches of the Krang, all of them so close to death, Leo reminds them one more time that they can fight back, sparking a genuine feeling of determination that gives them back their mystic powers. This is hope that Mikey latches onto with a death grip, pretty literally at that. Then Leo sacrifices himself, and the world is saved, but not their own, because they lost their brother. Their brother, for all that is foreseeable, is gone forever. Raph and Donnie immediately resign themselves, keeping their emotions relatively quiet. Raph collapses to the floor, making himself as small as possible. Donnie seems to be in shock, unable to really discern his own feelings, a gap between his emotions and logic, as per usual. But Mikey sobs, 
openly and loudly, letting himself feel the grief as he tries one more time to use his mystic hands, determined to do something, anything, to get his brother back. Raph, upon seeing this, instinctively pushes away his own feelings in order to prioritize his brothers. Not wanting to see Mikey strain himself futilely, he tells him to stop, because he wants to keep Mikey safe. Mikey has literally no reason to believe that the mystic powers Casey spoke of were even something he was truly capable of doing, or that they could save Leo. He already lost hope in them, but Leo didn't give up on Raph at their most hopeless moment, and Mikey doesn't give up. He's the spunk, the razzmatazz, the emotional glue of the family. Even when it gets on his brother's nerves at times, even when they only follow through to satisfy him, he's too stubborn to stop until he tries every option, too stubborn to give up on people, no matter how hopeless it may seem. And Leo reminded him of that in his weakest moment, so he has to try. He has no reason to think his powers will work, but he tries anyways because he can't give up on his brother. He tries because he needs them all to be okay. He is the thread that is twisted and woven into everything, and no matter how hard it pulls him in each direction, he will serve his purpose. Even when he begins to literally crack and break apart from the pressure, he keeps going because he has to. It's his job to make sure they're all happy, and he wouldn't be able to live with himself if he knew there was even a slither of a chance he could do something to keep Keep them safe and didn't. His powers spark at this determination, all of his emotions swirling through his veins, his grief, his desperation, his steadfast love for his brother. It's tunneling into one single emotion. It is hope, at its most purest and fervent. Future Mikey cracked under the pressure of his mystic powers, his emotional connection to his family, because he didn't have anyone who was able to keep him steady and support him. He cracks under the weight of his responsibility and physically crumbles away, but he does so with a smile on his face. Still, he serves as a bridge of hope between tragedy and safe haven. He is doing what he has to, a self-instilled duty to keep his family together. He could never give up hope on that, in spite of it all. At the end of the world, he makes his last action be one of union, a chance to save the world and to bring his family back. In the present, Mikey doesn't lose himself under the pressure because he has his brothers there for him, ready to support him no matter what. When he puts too much pressure on himself to keep them together, they take some of it off his shoulders for themselves by learning to believe in his efforts. And together, they get Leo back safe. In their darkest moment, Mikey's mystic hands begin to work, powered by his love for his family, and he brightens up the lives of his brothers with the promise that there is still hope. When Leo comes to terms with the fact that this is going to be his last moment alive, his brother's light reaches him when he needs it most. His self-given responsibility was to keep his family happy, connected, and safe. Except, it was never his to bear alone, and it never should have been in the first place. You're not alone, you are seen, and all you need is hope. I was really surprised by the amount that I had to say about Mikey as a character. I did not expect this video to be long at all. Anyways, thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed. Make sure to comment because I love reading comments and become a patron if you're able to or something. I don't know. I'm really bad at these. <laughs>